In this presentation, we will discuss chronic granulomatous disease which may cause severe recurrent bacterial and fungal infection. This is a defect in the phagocytosis medicated killing process of the pathogen. In the first few slides, we will discuss pathogenesis. In the first step of phagocytosis, phagocytic cells ingest the pathogens to form a phagosome. This process initiates phagocytosis mediated killing. Inside the cell NADPH oxidase help to form superoxide molecules from oxygen. Superoxide is converted to hydrogen peroxide by superoxide dismutase. Hydrogen peroxide is converted to hypochlorous acid by the enzyme myeloperoxidase. This process, oxidative burst, also helps to activate protease. These active molecules help to kill the pathogen inside the phagosome. In chronic granulomatous disease, NADPH oxidase is absent or malfunctioning. As a result, the whole oxidative burst is absent leading to the inability of phagocytes to clear the pathogen. Patients with CGD are typically more affected by catalase-positive organisms. Bacteria may produce hydrogen peroxide as a result of their metabolism. Phagocytic cells can utilize this hydrogen peroxide to form hypochlorous acid. In catalase-positive organisms, however, the hydrogen peroxide is broken down into water and oxygen by the catalase. It protects these bacteria from the harmful effects of hydrogen peroxide or other derivatives. What are the organisms that cause infection in patients with CGD? The five commonest pathogens are Staphylococcus aureus, Burkholderia capacea, Serratia marcescens, Nocardia and Aspergillus. In endemic areas, Salmonella and tuberculosis should be considered as well. Infection caused by the BCG should raise a suspicion of CGD. There are reports of infection caused by many other pathogens such as Granulobacter bethesdensis, Chromobacterium violaceum, etc. What are the organisms that cause infection in patients with CGD? The five commonest pathogens are Staphylococcus aureus, Burkholderia capacea, Serratia marcescens, Nocardia, and Aspergillus. In endemic areas, Salmonella and tuberculosis should be considered as well. Infection caused by the BCG should raise a suspicion of CGD. There are reports of infection caused by many other pathogens such as Granulobacter bethesdensis, Chromobacterium violaceum, etc. Other than infection, we may also find granulomatous disease, which may manifest as obstructive symptoms in the urinary or gastrointestinal system, for example, esophageal stricture or gastric outlet obstruction. It may also cause growth retardation in children. Although CGD manifestation is common in children, in some cases, manifestation could be delayed until adulthood. The diagnosis is usually made by a neutrophil function test, such as the dihydrorhodamine 1,2,3 oxidation test or the nitroblue tetrazoleum reduction test. The result should be confirmed by genetic testing. The principles of management of CGD include 1. Lifelong antibiotic and antifungal prophylaxis, usually cotrimoxazole and itraconazole. 2. Prompt recognition and treatment of infection. 3. Immunomodulatory treatment with interferon gamma. 4. Avoidance of BCG vaccine. 5. Cautious use of steroids or other anti-inflammatory drugs to reduce inflammation.